Thanks for joining us online here at Flatirons. We're in our current series, Operator's Manual. If you have any questions, feel free to visit our website at flatironschurch.com or any of our social media accounts. Thank you. Hey, good morning, Flatirons. It's great to see you. And my name's Brian. I'm so glad to be here with you this morning. Let's all stand up and sing together.
we're gonna sing a new song with this morning. Let's sing this out together. The Lord my God is with me. He's the mighty one who saves me. He delights in me with songs of joy. He surrounds me with his love. Thanks so much for singing with us this morning. Go ahead and take a second, say hello to somebody next to you, greet someone around you, and you can have a seat. All right, what's up, Flatirons? We good? Good. Hey, good clapping. We don't clap much here. 
I don't get to see you in action. That was really good. <laughs> And I'm glad you're here. Hope you're having a good weekend. Uh, here's how my weekend is going. All three of my kids are sick. 100% of my children are sick. And uh, they're all snotty and coughing and all that crap. And the other day, uh, Em was all like, eh, and she's crying. She goes, am I going to be like this forever? <laughs> and honestly, the way it's felt, I was like, I don't know, Em. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, Allie and I got a friend who says that the, she guarantees the way to fight off a cold if you have sick people in your house is every night before you go to bed, you take vitamin C and you drink a hot toddy and then you go to sleep. And I've been doing that for two days now. And I don't know if it's going to work, but it is a delicious way to fight off a cold. <laughs> 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, but hi. Uh, hey, so I got uh, some announcements for us and then we're going to continue on in the series. Jim's going to get back up here and keep teaching us in the middle of this man series. Uh, but here, here are some of the announcements. Uh, so the first one is Thrive, all right? We have a Thrive workshop right around the corner, January 28th. If you're unfamiliar with Thrive, this is one of our partners. It's a really cool partner. What they do is they connect chronically under or unemployed people into jobs that they can get and keep and hold on to, all right? They connect them to spiritual, practical principles to hold on to jobs. So if that's you and you're in that season of life right now, you're in a church who gets it. A lot of us have been in that boat and we want better for you. Right? Or if you know someone who could benefit from that, please get on the website and check it out. It's thrivecolorado.org. And that workshop is right around the corner, January 28th. The other thing that Thrive needs is we need coaches. All right? So maybe you're the kind of person that's like, you want to volunteer, you want to get plugged in and serve, you're not sure how to do that. You know, like you don't want to go hold people's babies, and I get it. Like I only want to touch my babies, that's fine. Um, but you know how to interview well, and you know how to have success in the workplace. That could be the perfect way for you to serve and volunteer here. Um, so thrivecolorado.org. All right, other announcement is this. We're about to kick off another semester of our community groups here at, at Flatirons. It's a new big thing that we're doing. But we need more group leaders. All right, so if you're relatively new, you missed the other sign up, or, or at the other sign up, you're like, I don't think I'm ready yet, and now you think that you are, um, please get on our, our website, flatironschurch.com. On the homepage is a big link um, to get you signed up to be a group leader so that we can pair people with you. If you have questions about that, need more information about it, there's a big groups wall out in the lobby, and there's gonna be a bunch of us there who can just field questions and give you more information about that. I will also be out there to represent our Brighton campus that we're getting close to opening. I can't give you a launch date or, or a place yet, so you can just not ask. <laughs> um, but I do want to get groups up and running because in my brain it's like, well, we can kick off our Brighton family before we open our doors, right? So if you think that's going to be you and you'll go to Brighton, come talk to me and let's hang out. Uh, last announcement is this, and it's a big one. Um, so Fathers in the Field, this is one of my favorite partnerships that we have here. What Fathers in the Field does is it takes totally normal men like us in this room or watching online, and it takes normal men like us and it pairs us as mentors into the lives of young boys who don't have dads living at home. And it's a powerful ministry, it's a transformative uh, ministry, but here's the thing that uh, bums me out right now is that we've got 12 young boys who have signed up to be paired with a mentor and they've been waiting around for six months now and there's not enough mentors who have signed up. All right, these, ki these kids live everywhere. They live in, in Boulder, Broomfield, Louisville, Longmont, Aurora, Arvada, all over the place and they're just, honestly, they're waiting for men like us to step up and say, you know, I'll walk through life with you. Right, you know, it's, it, it's not just hunting and fishing and outdoorsy stuff. It, like, they just need someone to, show up at their football game and know them by name and cheer them on, right? And that's on us to do that. Um, so if you're sitting here and you feel like that thing in your gut where you're like, I feel like I could do that and you're in a season of life where you could pull it off, please don't forget uh, for the rest of the you know, service after we sing the last song, go straight out to the tattoo wall, you can't miss it. Bunch of guys and fathers in the field shirts out there, um, they can give you more information about it and hopefully get you signed up as a mentor because we got these 12 kids sitting around waiting on us. Right, um, And what would be awesome is if we could get enough mentors so that we don't put kids on waiting lists anymore. Um, if that's you and that sparks something in you, uh, tattoo wall right after service. Uh, so that's it. Those are all the announcements. I do have to say this. We are about to listen to a song that has almost convinced me that not all country music sucks. <clears throat> I am not there yet. 
Well, I'm one song closer. <laughs> but you're going to see a seizure warning graphic, all right? This is not us being edgy or cool or something like that. It's real. Uh, we've had one down this weekend, all right? I know. It's our intern at rehearsal. This is before church even started. She's fine. Um, but if that's you and you think that that might trigger you, I don't know what that looks like for you, stepping out of the room for five minutes or looking at the floor for five minutes. It'll be over soon. I promise for the rest of us, we can enjoy this song and the rest of the service. Let me pray for us. God, uh, thank you for everybody in this room right now, everybody watching online. Uh, thanks for the chance to come in and, and have a good laugh, uh, and at the same time, lean into some really challenging truth from you that's ultimately freeing. So God, over the next few minutes, I pray that we have open ears and open hearts, and we listen to you well, and we learn something new about you, and we learn something new about what it looks like to follow you. And we pray this in your son's name, Jesus, amen.
so good. Have you noticed, again, I don't know what's happening at other campuses. Any, anytime anybody makes a solo, they make nasty face. It's like, ah, all right. So, yeah, a nasty face. Anyway, but, hey, just for the record, I did not pick that country song today. I've just been praying for the band for years and they finally saw the light and know <laughs> Jesus' favorite music is country. That's in the Bible. Um, you don't know. Um, Hey, welcome back. So last week we kicked off this Operator's Manual series where we are intentionally and unapologetically speaking to men, but not just men, anybody who has to deal with one. All right, you know who you are. Um, I'm dating one, I wanna date one, I'm married to one, I give birth to one, I'm trying to raise one, I go to school with one, I go to work with a whole bunch of them, all right? Young, old, married, single, we all have to deal with men, all right? And so, so in, in today's world though, we're looking at a really controversial subject. Uh, at least in this country, right? Like, like, what does it mean to be not just a man, a real man, whatever that is, um, but a good one? What's it mean to be a good, a good man? And by that I mean the kind of man that, that lines up with and agrees with who God created him to be and intended him to truly be. And the word there is truly as in truth because it all falls apart if we let go of truth. And so, so everybody knows what we're kind of operating off of this definition. Here's the definition of truth. Truth is what stands up when storms happen. And this is where we left off last week. Jesus said, uh, if you'll just take what I say is true and build your life on a rock, when storms hit your life, when storms hit your family, when storms hit your health, when storms hit your marriage, whatever that is, this time it won't fall apart. It'll actually hold together and stand up. Why? Because it's real and truth works best in reality. Now, pro probably the most uh, frequently heard phrase, if, if you get online, if you turn on the news, I, I, uh, all right, but um, around the topic of men and masculinity today, you, again, you cannot, you know, again, listen to any media without hearing that phrase, toxic masculinity. Y'all heard it, right? All right? And so just so we know what we're talking about here, when, any, when anybody says toxic mas masculinity, they're referring to uh, the male gender and defining or, or reducing his masculine attributes or, or characteristics usually uh, as behaviors that are totally driven by and measured by inappropriately as expressed violence, they're too aggressive, all they do is pursue sex and status, and they avoid emotional vulnerability, right? And again, man, it's not like we have to play dumb and go, I don't know what you're talking about. We, we, we own some of it, right? It's not like we can go, I've never been like that, that ever, right? No, but here's the problem, right? The solution that many in our culture seem to like be proposing or preaching or adopting and adapting is this, okay, here's the answer, just throw them out. Throw out masculinity or, or dumb it way down and redefine masculinity into something that it was never meant to be, something that is not true. And no one will like where that goes. Even if we're going after something good, if we let go of truth, we won't lo no, like where it goes because here's what's gonna happen. Storms will hit your life and it won't work. It won't stand up to reality. But we keep on trying to figure out what's the solution to, to all the dysfunction that we see around us in the world. And so, so people are throwing stuff out. Like, like the, I did a word study on this. The opposite of the word toxic, as in toxic masculinity, is harmless, powerless, impotent. That's, that's what it is, right? So I, I know I don't wanna be that, but does anybody wanna be that? And he's like, no, that's just bad options all the way around. Or how about this? This is where it gets a little dangerous. All right. The opposite of the word masculine, if we can get rid of toxic, let's get rid of masculine. The opposite of the word masculine is feminine, all right? Now that's just grammar, okay? And there are some people going, yeah, that would make it better. If, if men, men and women are going, here's the solution, everybody should just like act like we're the same, right? Men should surrender their masculine power and strength and time out, the rest of that sentence can get me in trouble. Because if I say, uh, and so surrender to masculine strength and act like women, here's what I'm gonna get. So you're saying women aren't strong? No. You're saying that, 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 that to act like a woman is a bad, no, I live with one. She's good. She is not weak, all right? She's strong, all right? But, but, but here, just go with me on this, all right? Surrender to masculine strength and, and let's all act the same. Listen, something inside of you has to pause. Because even if a man, you know, acted like a woman, if that was a good thing, there's something inside of us that just intuitively knows men and women, write this down, we're different. We're, we're different, and that difference, if it's lived out in a, in a good way, a true way, it's really good. It can be really, really good. And trying to pretend or force men to be something they're not or try to force or pretend women to be something they're, they're not, it never ends well because in reality, 
It's not true. We can fake it for a while, but give it enough time and it falls apart. So, so what's the answer? Let me throw something out. What if the answer to toxic masculinity is not throw out masculinity? That didn't seem like a good option, all right? Let me, let me propose something, all right? How about this? What if the answer or the solution to bad or toxic masculinity is to go after true good masculinity? I'm just throwing it out there. That just seems like a better option. Well, what do you mean by that? Like masculinity that's being manifested and, and expressed and, and leveraged in a way that it was created and meant to be manifested, expressed, and, and leveraged. And the question comes up is, well, how do you do that? Who knows how to do that? What would that look like? Where would we turn to find out what men and masculinity were meant to be and accomplish? And it's, we're just like everything else. Right, like, like anything else, if you have a question about anything, about like, now, why, why was that thing built? Why was that created and what was it built to do? What's the best way for it to, to function and perform? What, do, what are we supposed to do when, when it breaks down or, or it has a problem to get it back, back online? The best place to start is always the same and that is the operator's manual. All right, go back to the one, to, I got an idea. He goes, and he created us. You can call him what, the designer, the engineer, the inventor, the manufacturer of whatever it is that's in question. And this is what Jesus did. And we talked about this last week. Last week, um, whenever Jesus was asked a question about, okay, that's, that's tough. How does that work best, Jesus, in today's world? He, he always responded with some version of the same answer. But just go back to the beginning. Go back to the one who invented it. Go back to the operator's Manual. Now, now, last week I used a metaphor. I was a pretty good metaphor. And I, and I compared being a man to, to a, a sharp knife. That's not a knife. This is a knife. That's my Australian accent right there. Crocodile Dundee, anybody go to movies? <laughs> Boom. Not saying size matters, but knives, it does. Here's what I'm saying, all right? I'm just talking about knives. I don't know where your minds are, all right? Anyway, here's what I mean. I'm gonna get so many emails. I didn't say that in the other services. You're welcome, world. Uh, so, here's, so being a man is kind of like this. This knife in the right hands can provide and protect and create something really good, right, in the right hand. But this same knife in the wrong hand has the same potential to harm and murder and destroy and, and slice and dice everybody within its reach. And it's kind of like that being a man. Let me tell you what the answer is not. Let's ban knives, right? Let's get rid of all the knives so nobody hurts anybody, right? Or how about this? Let's take whatever knives we have and grind down the edge so it's dull and it can't do anything, it can't cut anybody, it can't, it's not able to do any harm. Listen, a dull, I'm gonna use the word, impotent knife isn't a good thing either. It's actually more dangerous. What if the, what if the answer, if I, this is the last time I have to do this, if I, I haven't lost a limb yet, this is proof there's a God. So anyway, but what if the answer, man, is this? What if we were to sharpen this thing to its, its absolute greatest potential and then train the one who's holding it to use it as it was meant to be used? That seems like a good idea. Now, I'm using a lot of metaphors up here. So what's true with a knife, what I found to be true is true with chainsaws, right? And then we talked about chainsaws last week. So, so here's what I mean by that. Anything that has the, 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 the power and the capacity and the potential to do something good, a knife, a chainsaw, whatever, it also has the power, potential, and capacity to do something really bad, right? And if you don't believe me, I did this the other day, Google chainsaw accident images. Wow. Well, don't do that. Kids, don't do that, okay? It, you will not eat lunch. It'll just be, huh, right? It'll be bad. I, I look at it going, how did you do that, dude? How did you even reach that? I mean, it's like, time to thin the herd. That's what I'm saying. It's like, how, how? <laughs> You know, you know, all right, so let's come on back. All right, so, all right, so. Now here, <laughs> I mean, so many letters, all right, so here, here's where it gets really, really confusing. When what was meant to be used for good is used for something else in a way that it was never meant to be used, and then somebody gets hurt or injured or, or, or die, here's what we do. We turn all of our anger in the wrong direction. Right, and here's what I mean by that. So one of my favorite authors, his name is Dallas Willard. I don't know if I read this in one of his books or I, or I heard it in one of his lectures, but uh, he says it's like, it's like, and every dude in here is about to go, yeah. It's like trying to take a lawnmower and flip it upside down and use it like it's a helicopter. Now, on a certain level, some of you are going, that, we, we, we could, you could do that, all right? So no, 
No, no, it makes sense, all right? But, but here's what, if you try to do that, it might work for a while, but eventually it's just, it's gonna have tragic results, all right? See, what, follow me, okay? So I'm not really talking about these, all right? What makes a really great lawnmower makes a really horrible helicopter. And it's a matter of time until somebody gets chopped up. And then our typical response is, get mad at the lawnmower and sue the manufacturer. Right, it's like, I don't know. The truth is, we try to redefine and repurpose and then use or misuse something in a way that it was never intended to be. And what followed was what we read, if we would have, if we would have read it, it was in the operator's manual the whole time. If you own any machinery and have an operator's manual, it says something like this. Improper use of this, fill in the blank, can lead to death and injury. We just didn't believe it. We didn't think it would happen to us, right? That happens to other people. <laughs> Said every person in the emergency room, right? Now, again, follow me. What's true for knives and it's true for chainsaws and it's true for lawnmowers and it's true for helicopters and it's true for people, men. And if you don't believe me, Google tragic results of men abusing their power. And the images are more horrific than a chainsaw massacre. And they number in the billions. Because men, let's be honest, we have... We have misused our power, and I mean, I'm not throwing stones at anybody. It's like, it's like something is broken, and we're angry, right? And here's the other thing, it's not new. It's as old as, 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 as time, uh, time itself. It really is literally the oldest story in the book, but it can be traced back to the same source. This is what I wanna look at today. There comes a time in every man or woman's life where they make a choice, they make a decision to do something. And that's what I wanna look at today, okay? So, so we're gonna look at this, about half a chapter of, of, a, of a book in the Bible called Romans. Um, it, was a, it was written by a guy named Paul to a little church in the city of Rome. It's still there, all right? So, so, so about 2,000 years ago, the church is just getting started. There's a little church there. They were having problems, and their world was very similar to what we're seeing in our country even right now. You don't believe that, but study history. You're gonna find a lot of the same challenges they were experiencing there. And so Paul, he wants, he's over like in, in Israel and in, in, in that area of the, of the Mediterranean. He wants to get to Rome. He can't do it right now. He's heard about the problems, so he writes a letter to them to deal with some of the stuff. What we're gonna read is part of that, that letter, and then later he ends up going, going to Rome. Okay, so again, the world's not very different, but here's what Paul writes to these people. And, and again, we'll, I'll break all this down. He says this, for the wrath of God, and that's a scary statement, so we'll unpack that in a minute, all right? So, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. All right, so you can see it, you're experiencing it, the wrath of God. It's, it's revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, that's the opposite of godliness, and all unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness, they suppress the truth. And let's look at that, all right? So the wrath of God, big scary statement, okay? That word wrath, um, it, 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 it's translated literally this way. Uh, it means anger which leads to consequences. And that, that's true. So, so there's something God is looking at and it's angry, he's angry about it and, and there's gonna be consequences. But, but in this case, the word wrath, it doesn't just mean God's really mad at you. You really screwed up this time, all right? Watch out. It, it actually can be translated this, anger that's mixed with, with grief because what God has seen happening in his men and in his women and in his families and in, and in his world, um, it, he grieves and here's why. Because he sees that what is happening there, it's totally avoidable. It didn't have to happen. Now every parent, listen to me right now, you know what I'm talking about. This, this anger with, with grief, because, and, and don't look at your kid right now, give him a break, you look at me, all right? So, so you told your kid to do something and they didn't do it, and now you're angry because you're looking at going, buddy, now you're gonna have to pay for that. There's gonna be consequences, there's gonna be pain, and you brought it on yourself. But here's, here's, here's the part that just breaks your heart. It's like, this didn't have to happen. Do not look at her. Right, right, look at me, right? Um, if, if, if you just listen to me, I'm not dumb. I actually know what I'm talking about. And all this would have been avoidable if you just would have believed that what I told you was true. And it breaks your heart. And, and in this case, what, what Paul's talking about is, the people he's talking about is like, hey, um, you, knew. you knew. You knew what was true and you made a choice, and I love the word he used, you chose to suppress it, push it down, act like it's, you know, our kids have all done this, la, 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 I don't, I don't wanna look at that, I don't wanna, I don't want I refuse to admit that's true. 
We've all done it. This is what Paul's talking about. So let's keep on going. It says, for, for what can be known about God, so you wanna know about God, for what can be known about God is plain to them. Now let's take a time out. This word them, this, this pronoun, you're gonna see this pronoun, or form of this pronoun through the rest of what we're gonna talk about. But, but if the Bible is who, what the Bible claims to be, this is not an isolated letter to some people who live in Italy 2,000 years ago. It has to apply to us. So anytime you see some form of this pronoun, you can just replace it with us, what do you mean us? Everybody listen to my voice right now, right? We, right, whatever that is. So, so let's kind of, for what can be known about God, it's plain to us. Why well, can you say it? Because God has shown it to us. What do you mean? All right, for his invisible attributes, for God's invisible, you can't see him, but watch this, right? Namely, his eternal power and his divine nature. So the character of God, you can't see it, but it has been clearly what? Oh, well, you can see it. You can perceive it. Somehow you can know that it exists. Well, how can you say that? Well, ever since the creation of the world, the universe, the planet, and we'll get to that in a minute, right? In the things that have been made, what do I see there? God. So we are without excuse. And you know what you call somebody that doesn't have an excuse? Accountable. Responsible. Yeah, that's me. Now, now follow this, because this is, this is really, 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 really important, and it's really, really hard, and it's really, really confusing, and some of us are gonna get it, and some of us are gonna go, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Here's what Paul is saying. He's saying this, it's almost mystical. What he's saying is, there is some level of truth, and I don't know what that level is, that's, that's God's deal, okay? But there's some level of truth that God has placed, like, intuitively into every person who's ever been born and placed on this planet. And how can you say, because we are created in his image and his likeness. And he's put something within us, a level of truth that says, I'm right here and I'm like this. And not only that, not only has he put it in us, he says this, and you can look around at, at, at the world that I created. What, what do you mean by that? Nature, biology, cells, animals, planets, stars, human beings, relationships. You can look around at the world to the point that God says, I, I have put enough truth in your life, in you and around you, to hold you accountable to a certain level of, yeah, I don't have God figured out, but I, I know there's a God, I know what he must be like, and this is how the world's supposed to work. And that's convicting. So I, I, I don't read a lot of books. Oh, really? Uh, but um, I've been reading a lot of this guy named Jordan Peterson, and, I, and I, I, I go, he's the smartest person I've ever met. He wrote that 12 uh, uh, Rules of Life book. It's the number one book in the world right now, but he's so smart. He's a professor up in Toronto. And anyway, I, I love listening to him talk because um, his, the time out here, his approach to the biblical stories, he knows so much about the Bible and accounts, um, he approaches it more of um, it's, it's mythological, or it's uh, like archetypal, like, like, like literature, okay? But, but, but even, even, I don't, again, I'm trying, I can't figure out his whole faith system, uh, and I'm trying, all right? But no matter what he's talking about, you know, and he talks about some weird stuff, like, like the serotonin levels in lobster brains. Fascinating stuff, you should read more about that. Anyway, or, or, or why birds fight with each other over territory, or why people fire missiles at each other in, in wars, and the differences in, in human like gender roles over the century. But no matter what he's talking about, he always comes back to the same place, and this is, this is where he always lands. The universe will show you what works. What do you mean? Reality will show you what works. Biology will show you what works. Because this is the way that reality works. What works lasts, and what doesn't work is extinct. Right? And, and here's the thing is, and I don't know if he means to say this, I don't know if he's aware of that he's saying this, but maybe unintentionally what he's saying is the universe, physical, biology, chemical, whatever you want to call it, it agrees with God. We don't have it all figured out, but everything we say agrees with God. And you know why? Because God created it. Biology, his, his idea. Chemistry, physics, the universe. He says, listen, that was my idea. I know how it works best. And, so, and, and here's the other thing. I was, I was driving around in my truck the other day and I was listening to one of his podcasts and he gave this illustration. I was like, well, that's, that's my life. He says, and again, every dude in this room is gonna go, yeah, I did that. Uh, so have, have you ever, guys, have you ever taken one of those plastic rulers to see how far you can bend it? Like, 
mm, and everybody's looking at you like, you're stupid, right, right? And you're like, no, you'll go more, watch, all right? And it's creaking, like, and, and people are like, uh, uh, all right, and you're like, oh God, I got, and why we do it in front of our face? All right, all right, but, but eventually, you're going, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. And you know what always happens? It, it either breaks or worse yet, it, it self-corrects. It's like, well, bam, ah, right, right? And we're like, oh, I gotta go to the nurse, whatever, whatever that is, okay? But, but, but here's his point was, was this. If it, you can bend truth as far as you wanna bend it for a while. You can pretend like something's true for you. Well, it's my truth. It's not your truth, that's his truth. Her, she's living her life by, by that truth. It's not my truth, but you know, I'm not gonna judge anything right. Listen, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, it doesn't matter if it's my truth or your truth. If your truth doesn't agree with what God says is true, it's a matter of time until it self-corrects and it falls apart. And usually the place where it, it self-corrects and falls apart is a really painful moment. Anybody have one of those or a dozen, right? G Jesus said it this way. He says, you can do anything you want in the dark for a while, but eventually it's all gonna be pulled out in the light and exposed for what it really is. You know what they call that moment? Busted. <laughs> ah, right, caught. Consequences, pain. See, this is what Paul is saying. Paul's saying, okay, we're all listen, Colorado, online, wherever you listen, right? Listen, you, you wanna know why the world's so jacked up? Because you've been taking truth and bending it into something that's not true. Here's the convicting part none of us like. Deep down inside, we knew. We, we knew this is not a good idea. This is not gonna work. This cannot turn out well. And the pain that a lot of us in this, listen to me right now, the reason we're having so much pain in our life or will is because truth and reality caught up with us, right? And it's self-correcting back going, that doesn't work. It's going back to the way it was meant to be. Not according to Jim, but according to the creator who wrote that operator's manual. Now, I'm, I'm gonna read through the next few verses there. And again, grab a Bible on your way out. There's free Bibles on, in the back, all right? I'm not gonna slow down for a lot of explanation because you, you'll get it, all right? But, but it's leading to the root cause of everything. And in your program, today is called like a really bad exchange, two deals on the table. We, 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 we picked up the wrong deal. And here's what I mean by that, okay? So, for although... They, and we're not talking about people, Italians, all right? We're talking about us, all right? So although we, we knew God at some level, God says, I'm gonna hold you, you know, I'm right here. So although we knew God, we did not honor him as God. We didn't give thanks to God, but we became futile, empty, frustrated. That makes sense in our thinking. And their foolish hearts were darkened. Now look at this next sentence. See if this describes our culture at all. How about this, all right? Claiming to be wise, <laughs> they became fools. Everybody's wise. I was in a movie, therefore I'm an authority, right? Said every award show. Um, I, I, I'm an athlete, therefore I'm an authority on everything. I have a talk show, therefore I'm an authority on, on, on everything. I'm like, you know, I'm so wise. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. And here it is, they exchanged the glory, like the awesomeness of, of the immortal God. We traded that in for images resembling people. When I worship God, we're gonna worship us. And, and nature, birds and animals and, and creeping things. So, so here, here's God, he goes this. Okay, listen, full disclosure. I made this, I made you. This is how you work well. This is how this works well. This is how it functions best in the reality that I created. And our response is, I don't want that. I don't, I don't want that. I don't want that to be true for me. I don't like that. It's not how I feel. So I'm gonna do something different. And so he, after a while, here's God's response. Therefore, because of our response, God gave them up, and I'm gonna come back to that, all right? God gave them up in the lust of their hearts, and lust is just uncontrolled, emotions and feelings drive my heart. All right, go with it. So God gave you over to the emotions of your heart, to impurity, and to the dishonoring of your bodies among yourself. And to me, to me this is one of the saddest verses in the Bible. And when I originally like, put this talk together, I thought to myself, I hope that never applies to me, but in the rearview mirror of my life, this has described big chunks of my life. And here's what I mean by that. There is a point where after telling God enough times, but out of my life and leave me alone and let me do what I wanna do, you do that enough times, eventually God will look at you, look at me, and he'll go, all right. 
There you go, here's the keys, go for it. Run your own life, do whatever you want. You're on your own, go. It's your choice, I didn't do this to you, just so you know. Now, now let me clar- clarify something because I, I, I don't want anybody to walk out of here just overwhelmed, right? God doesn't give up on anybody. There is no verse in the Bible going, but if you do that, it's straight to hell, all right? Or like, that's the 27th time you've done that, I'm sick and tired of you, don't even pray to me anymore. It's not in the Bible. We put that on God a lot, he does not put that on us. God doesn't give up on anybody no matter what you've done. Is everybody clear on that? He, he hasn't given up on you today, all right? But, all right, there comes a point where God gives you or turns you over to you. He says, I'm right here, and you go, I don't want you. Okay, I'm gonna turn you over to yourself. You follow your heart in, instead, of, instead of me. And how do we end up here? We made a choice, of an exchange, a really, really bad one. What did we swap out? How, how about this? Um, because they exchanged the truth about God. And, and at some level, we knew what we were doing. We exchanged the truth about God for a lie. And we worshiped and served like the creature rather than the creator who's blessed forever. And amen just means, I, I'm, I'm telling you it's true. Right, so, so follow me on this. God, he doesn't hide anything from us. He, he wants us to prosper. He wants, us, he wants us to experience an abundant life. That's what Jesus said, right? So full disclosure, he says, okay, so here's what God says is true. On one or two bases, or maybe both. Intuitively, I put it inside of you and you just know or I've surrounded you with people to, to teach you what's true. Because let's be honest, there's some of us, we look back, we've had some really, really horrible things happen to us, and it broke our definitions. We don't even know what it means to be a man. We've never seen a real one, a real good one. We didn't have a dad, we didn't have a marriage, we didn't have a mom, we didn't have all those things that people are supposed to have. And so we're holding on to this, we just made it up as we go, and so we're actually holding on to something that's not True. So God says, well, I'm gonna put enough truth into you to pay attention, and then I'm gonna put somebody in your life to go, I'm telling you, this is true. How can you say that? Because you're here. You're right, you're here. And God's, it's not me, God's saying, pay attention to this. This is why I brought you into this room right now. You need to hear this part. And so I, I, here's our response. God says, this is true, here's my response. Well, I'm gonna choose to act like something else is true. Even though I know it's a lie, I just don't like that for me, or I'm gonna choose to value something more than God, and value something just means I'm gonna worship it. We sing songs all you want and say I worship God, whatever, all right? Your life will show what you worship. That's just true. I'm gonna choose to spend my life on something, and I know it's not gonna last. When I jumped into it, I knew this isn't gonna end well, but I did it anyway. I chose that over something God says will last forever. So, So my original title of this whole talk today was gonna be knockoff, like, like, you know, those cheap imitation counterfeit parts, and you see them you know, advertised all the time. It's like, better than the original, right? Warranty, guaranteed, you know? Which reminds me of Tommy Boy. Anybody? You can poop in a box. And, anyway, but anyway, so. You all should watch more movies. All right, so, so the whole thing is we have we've said, okay, it's, it's good enough. It's just as good. I think, I think it'll work for me. And the rest of that chapter, and read this on your own later, right? The rest of that chapter gives a long list of what always follows when you say, I'm gonna take truth and let go of it, and I'm gonna pick up a lie. So again, I was a social minor, and, and I, love, I, I love studying cultures, and I've studied cultures and humanities and all that. I've studied Egyptian culture and Greek culture and Roman culture and European culture, and now I'm studying North American culture, and everybody's going, oh, the world's going, going to hell. It's as bad as it's ever been. Ah, no, it's not. We're just getting started. This is a cycle that goes over and over and over. And here's what happens if you study any culture and go back far enough, the same thing happens. Here's truth and here's reality. I'm gonna let go of that and pretend like something else is true. In the same sequence, first of all, gender comes under attack. It's always the first thing under attack. Gender confusion, um, g- gender redefinition. What, what is a man? What is, is a woman? Sexual acting out, sexual dysfunction, men trying to be women, women trying to, to, to be men, the destruction of marriage, the destruction of, of families, and the absolute intolerance of anybody who says, what you feel or what you wanna do for you is wrong. You can't say that, that's hateful. And I am not being political. How can you say that? Because that was written 2,000 years ago. This didn't come out of Washington last week. It's the same old story for the same old reason. What do you mean? I don't want your operator's manual. 
Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me how to run my life. Don't tell me what a man is or a woman is. Don't tell me what marriage is. And eventually God looks back and goes, okay, go for it. Go for it. But just so you know, full disclosure, this is where it will end up. Not nothing new. Okay, time out. All right, so here's what I imagine some people are thinking right now. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, why did we come? Uh, so some of you are saying, going, okay, this is what I thought it was gonna be. Because last week I was in here and you promised that in this series it's gonna be able to help me to like um, articulate a confident statement about my identity as a man, my mission and purpose as a man, and how God is gonna really give me the strength to actually be that kind of man. And so far for the last 30 minutes, all you've done, Jim, is, is you've talked about the problem. When are you gonna get to the good stuff? And you're right. All, all I've really done so far is describe the problem. And um, I will get to the good stuff, eventually. Not today, all right, and here's why. Here's why, okay? Um, even if I told you what God says is true about you, what's possible for you, e even if I told you the good stuff, you wouldn't believe it. So how can you say that? Because if you did, you'd already be living out of it. And that's just logic. So let me, let me wrap, wrap this up, and next week we'll get to the good stuff, I promise, all right? So, so um, I talk about this retreat I went on uh, about four or five years ago. There's a men's version, a women's version, a Crucible Soul Beauty, and I believe those retreats are right for every person on the planet at the right time. If you go to the wrong time, it's just a, it's a mess. But, all right. but, but if you ever decide to go to one of these retreats, you can get on our website and find out more about it. But, so there are a few questions, if you sign up, that somebody's gonna call you and ask you, and then when you show up at the retreat, they're gonna ask you again, and then throughout the weekend, they're gonna ask you the same question in different ways. But it's a question, and let me just talk to men, um, that applies for women. Um, and we never really, we're so busy and just trying to go so fast, we've never asked this question. But the question I would ask men would be this, so what is it that you really want for yourself? You ever, when was the last time you asked yourself that? What do I want from me as a man? And, and, and if, you, if, if you had that, if you knew I have that, what would it mean was true about you, right? What kind of man would you be if you knew you had that in your life? Well, if I had that in my life, I would know I'm a strong man, I'm a confident man. I know I'm enough, I know I'm good enough, I'm good. And that's what we all want, right? I want, if that was in my life, I would know I'm, I'm, I'm a good man. So here's the really intrusive question. And why don't you have it? Why don't you already have it? What is keeping you from having what you want and being the man that you want to be? Because I'm gonna be honest with you, I have read this operator's manual several times and he's pretty clear. I'll tell you who you are. I'll tell you what your purpose is. I'll tell you what your mission is. I'll tell you what I've entrusted and I promise I will take care of you, okay? It's all in here. And we don't believe him. So let me, let me rephrase this question maybe a little more accurately. What does God say is already true about you that you have, and maybe unintentionally, but you've, you've let go of it, you've exchanged what God says is true for a lie, and how is that lie robbing you of what, this is important, what both you and God want you to have? And what needs to happen in your life? It's that spiritual formation thing that we talk about all the time. It's like I'm hanging on a rope right here and this is my belief system because life has done some stuff to me and now this is what I'm left with. When I think about God, I think about this. When I look in the mirror and I see me, I think about this. When I think about masculinity, sexuality, marriage, parenting, whatever it is, value, worth, this is what I've landed on. And now I'm getting to know God a little bit better and he says this is better and this is true and this works. Why can't I let go of this and go with God? Why can't I do that? That's the goal, right? I want that. Something's holding me back. Now, I've been doing this like for almost 35 years, all right? And I've worked with a lot of men and women, but let me talk to me, all right? Young men, old men, whatever that is, okay? And, and here's what I've found, all right? I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll spend some time with a man and then, and then we'll lose contact and then maybe uh, a while later I'll, I'll, I'll meet back up with him and something's different. And I'll say something like, what? Dude, what's up? You're like, uh, better, like something happened. And, and he'll start explaining. I'll go, okay, wait. So is, can you look back and see if there was like, if you put your finger on a day in the timeline of your life, this moment changed everything. And it's really hard to find that. The day my life changed was Tuesday at seven o'clock. No, it's really hard to do that. The closest moment 
that I find that all these men have in common, I call it um, a, a looking in the mirror moment. And everybody has these, all right? You go in the bathroom and you close the door and you look in the mirror and you're like, Phew. you with me? It's really hard to even make eye contact with that person. And you're like, ah, what's wrong with you? Get your together, why, 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 why can't you? I hate, I hate this, I hate you. And then through that conversation in your head, you, I, I want something different. I want, I, want, I, want, I, want my, I want a different future. I want my life to be different. You've got to do something different. And, and I would like to say, and then I open the bathroom door, and here I, yep, da, 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 right? so, um, that rare, rarely happens, but, but, but there has to be a moment where you say, I want something different. And from that moment, I got up and I started doing something different. See, I teach this all the time, right? If you want your life to change on in anything important, you gotta have vision, intent, and, and, and strategy, right? So I have a homework assignment for you, all right? There's, there's a, a list of coming, all right? So, so here's what I want you to do. And, and if you don't have a program with you, if you do, get it out. But um, do this later, maybe even before you leave the room you're sitting in right now. But I wanna talk to men. Women, you can do this too. Men, as a man, as a male, you know who you are, what roles as a man do you play in this world? As a man, a husband, oh yeah, a father, son, brother, friend, boyfriend, student, coach, teammate, whatever that is, okay? So pick out, pick out the most important one to you. And what's your vision for that? If you could be that kind of man, you, right? And he, now here's, here's the conversations, why, why bother? Why bother, Jim, you don't understand. I mean, that's great, I'd love that to happen in my life, but you don't know my story, because this happened, and my dad was like this, and my mom was like this, and my ex whatever was like this, and my life was really, really hard, my body's betraying me, my, this happened, and this happened, and this. Listen, take a breath. Okay, can we just throw out the excuses and go, I I'm just gonna take responsibility for the future. So, vision, all right? If you could be the kind of man that agrees with what God says is true about you, what kind of man, what kind of husband, what kind of father, what kind of friend, what kind of coworker, what kind of coach, what, what kind of 16-year-old boy who goes, I don't know you say that, 16-year-old young man who goes to that high school, what kind, of, what kind of man would you be? And what would your life look like? Can you imagine, let's just go, to, I'll go, so I, I love being a husband. Hey, hey man, listen, what if your wife looked at you and went, I don't know what God was thinking, but if it was good, it's you. Right, that's a chainsaw, right? It's a moment, it's like, I'm just telling you, right? Like, like what, dad, listen, dads, what if your kids looked at you and went, dad, you're, the, you're, like, if, you're like the best dad ever. What if your girlfriend looking at you and went, dude, I, please propose, all right? Because when I'm with you, I actually am better, I feel protected, I, I feel loved, I feel valued, and I don't wanna picture my life without someone as good as you. Can you, can you imagine? So we're gonna sing this song in a minute. Is I, I am who you say I am, all right? Can you imagine that you look back at God and go, hey, I am. I, you, you, I read your manual, and you said, this is what a husband is? I am, I'm that. And God goes, I know. And I'm that kind of brother. All my siblings, they love. The kind of brother I am, the kind of friend I am. Everybody at, works, at work, they just look at me going, dude, you're a good man. You gotta have a vision for your life. You gotta have intent, we're gonna skip that and come back to it. So what's your strategy? See, what needs to change so that your vision because right now your vision is just a wishful thinking. It's a pipe dream, someday, right? So what, what needs to change? What, what I need to do, new or different, so that my vision becomes the truth being lived out in my marriage, in my home, in my family, with my girlfriend, at my job, whatever that is where you're gonna get up out of this room and you're gonna go do something what, that, that's being lived out there. Vision, what do you need to do? And the big thing in between is intent. The best definition of intent someone gave me this past week is, is it's that look in the mirror moment. Something's gotta change. It's that line in the sand. This was my life and I want a different life. It's the, it's the thin red line, which we're gonna get to in about a month, okay? It's that where you go, okay, my life was like this and then I stepped in and went, it's a new day. 
from now on. I want it and I'm tired of talking about it and wishing about it and praying about it. I'm gonna walk towards it. So again, three main drivers in my life of intent are pain, desperation, and hope. My life is so painful, something has got to change. Anybody there? I'm so desperate, I'm so afraid, I can't, I can't lose another one. I can't lose another kid, I can't lose another marriage, I can't lose another friend, I can't lose another job. I got to get it together, right? So pain and desperation, and then I hear about this Jesus who goes, I'll, I'll go with you, I'll take care of you, I forgive everything, it's a new day, and I got hope. That's what we're gonna pick up next week. The good stuff. So here's your homework assignment, and then we're gonna sing a song and get out of here, all right? The first thing is, I, I want you to read your Bible this week. Oh, it's too much. All right, listen, <laughs> it's three chapters. It's the first three chapters of the whole Bible. Genesis one, two, and three. I don't even know where that is. Table of contents, Genesis. All right, it's right there, okay? It's like page 10, all right? So you just go to you find the word Genesis, bingo, start reading, okay? So it's all about how God created. And here's what somebody's going, oh, I don't believe in creation, I believe in evolution. Well, good for you, take a breath. Just take that and go, all right, I'll put it over here. And even if it's symbolic, I believe it's actually true, but even if you're going, it's, 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 it's metaphorical. Oh, okay, here's what I want you to do before you come back in here next week, okay? I want you to read it, and all I want you to try to mine out of it is, this is what God did, and this is what he told me to do. That's it. God says, I'm in charge of this, don't worry about that. I got planets and stars, not your deal, mine, all right? So I'm in charge of that, you're in charge of this. Here's what I want you to do. That's all I want you to mine out of that. Men and women, I want you to both do this, okay? And do, ladies, remember we talked about it. You don't go, <laughs> you're not doing that. Shut up, all right? So, all right, so this is what God says is true. This is what you're, you're supposed to do. And this look, don't even go to your own life. This is what that man did right, and this is what this man did wrong. And then we're gonna come in here, and we're gonna look at it for us, okay? Now, here's how I ended the, last night. I had all the men stand up, and I thought, that's not fair. See, ladies, I'm listening, all right? Um, um, so here's what I want. I want everybody to stand up. Everybody stand up. All our campuses stand up. And if you're in some hotel room in Minneapolis, stand up. All right? Um, I think there actually is somebody there. Anyway. But anyway, so um, here's what I want. We're going to say some. I'm going to say something, and I want you to repeat it back to me with the, with the emotion that goes with it. So if it's really bleh, then say it bleh. So you're taking notes, how do you spell that? I don't know, all right, uh, but if it's good, say it good. If it's strong, say it strong, all right? I'll, I'll give you an example of this, okay? So, I am a victim of my past, say it. Isn't that depressing? But you say it every day. I do. I'm a, I'm a victim. Say, I'm a victim of my past. Let's see if this feels any better. I am not a victim of my past. Which feels more powerful? Oh, this, that, good, all right, you're paying, all right, so how about this, all right? My life will never change, say it. That's hopeless, right? Go with this one. Um, I choose to change my life. Let's keep going. I want a different future. I am, I am choosing to choose my future. I will change my future. Watch me change my future. Watch me change my future. Now, let, that's, hold on. Doesn't that feel good? And you haven't thought and felt that in a long time. Men, it's true. You just believed a lie that all you have in your future is more of your past. And that's not from God. It's not true. And ladies, you know what? Somebody told you and treated you like you weren't good. And they were wrong. God still thinks you're good. God still thinks you're, you're strong. And you're looking at your life going, but my life is over, my life is dead, our relationships. You know who I follow? I follow the God who resurrects dead stuff. And he can call the dead part of your life. You gave up on you, God has not. And here's a, here's a news flash: The person next to you, they haven't given up on you. They're just scared. But they still believe in you. And all things are still possible through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? Amen, Amen just means I agree, all right? <laughs> You're so religious. All right, so, um, all right, so I'm, yeah, let's go, good, that's good, that feel good. 
I'm thinking there's a dude in Minnesota going to his laptop right now. It's so beautiful, all right? I'm gonna pray and we're gonna sing this song. So God, in this moment right now, just take the light and just send it back to hell where it came from because we're with you and we are who you say we are and you are who you say you are and you're a good God and you're a good king and you haven't given up on anybody in this room. Even if the rest of the world's given up on us, you have not and you still have a plan for our life, a person, purpose for our life and a mission for our life because you are the only one to get to tell us who we are and what we're worth and so we're gonna go in your direction. This is our look in the mirror moment and it's a good moment because from now on, we're gonna follow you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Hey, great morning together. We're so glad you're here with us this morning. Let's take that truth with us that God has given us the strength to be able to go out and change our lives. He can do that through us and in us. We love you guys. Have a great week for a team up at the front. We'll see you next time.